We're going to move to our uh, second uh, distinguished uh, lecturer. I'd like to request uh, Juan, if you could please display the uh, introductory slide for uh, Dr. Richard Gomez. Uh, Dr. Gomez, of course, is the uh, mayor of Ormoc City. Uh, he was originally in his first term as mayor from 2016 to 2019, and he got reelected in 2019. Uh, he obtained his doctorate degree in public administration from CTU. Uh, he has, as I mentioned, and this is true for, this was true for uh, Aaron as well, our distinguished speakers today have a voluminous uh, curriculum vita that I won't have the time to really uh, articulate uh, every one of their accomplishments. So I told myself to just pick three or four notable ones. Uh, he led the construction of the 40 million peso uh, water clarifying plant in Ormoc City. And uh, due to his leadership, Ormoc City was uh, given this award of the best e-governance business empowerment, uh, which was uh, second place in the nation, which was really quite uh, notable. Uh, of course, Dr. Gomez lives in a parallel universe from science and engineering. He's a very well-known actor and uh, host, as well as uh, sportsman and athlete. Uh, but we are claiming him in our community uh, in science and engineering and uh, public service. So uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Gomez, we're, we're very uh, proud to have you here at Paase, and I yield the floor to you. Hi, uh, thank you, doc Dr. Joel. Uh, good morning, everybody. and. Uh, to other people uh, out of the Philippines, uh, good evening to you. Um, I wonder, Dr. Joel, if you have uh, my presentation right here on the board. Uh, yes, uh, Mon, uh, please load uh, Mayor Gomez's presentation. Let's just wait a minute or so. So, Mayor Gomez, are you in your office in Ormoc City? Yes, I'm here right now at the City Hall. All right. Okay, so while we're waiting, uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, uh, folks who just uh, logged in. Uh, so, welcome again to the session, and uh, please uh, post your questions, comments uh, online uh, when you have the opportunity. Thank you. Hey, thank you, uh, Dr. Joel, again. Uh, thank you uh, very much, everybody, for this uh, opportunity I'm presenting to you right now, the technology and social innovation amidst uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that's happening not just in Ormoc City, not just in the Philippines, but all over the world. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the story of uh, Ormoc City. So let me begin by uh, giving a timeline of uh, uh, what's been happening here in Ormoc City. In, in March 9, uh, the Philippines declared a state of uh, public emergency. And uh, as we move fast, uh, on March 11, uh, as mayor of Ormoc City, I organized our own uh, multi-agency COVID-19 task force. Huh? And then March 12, uh, we organized our emergency response teams at barangay levels and uh, established our protocols in schools and offices. And then the following day, on March 13, we reduced our uh, working days for, for government workers from uh, six days, uh, from five days to uh, four days a week. And then uh, we established our border controls and we required people coming in our borders to sign a health form for uh, those who'd like to enter the city. And then we set up a, uh, a COVID-19 uh, hotline so that uh, all people uh, that we have reports will just go through our hotline. And uh, Ormoc City was one of the first uh, few LGUs in the country to declare a community quarantine imposing border control measures. Uh, this measure was not very popular when we began, you know, but a lot of people uh, would uh, come in Ormoc City because Ormoc City is one of the biggest cities here in Region 8 and people come here to do their market, they do their grocery, and by closing down the border and not allowing anyone to come in except for those who live in Ormoc, it's really uh, painful for, for people. And uh, in the beginning, I can say that a lot of people uh, were quite mad with what I, I did, but you know, 
as as mayor for of the city public health is really uh, my uh, my interest no and uh, I, I was voted and elected by the people to protect them and uh, ormoc city is uh, was a uh, uh, first to impose several additional measures to ensure the lessening the risk of uh, transmission of uh, COVID-19 at the expense of economic activities. Uh, if you'll take a look at the next slide, um, we also uh, prohibited uh, individuals going out of their homes. No? Uh, right now, uh, the national government uh, requires to have people from uh, 21 years old up to 60. But initially, uh, ours was 14 years and uh, up to 65 years old cannot uh, get out of their homes. And uh, on the next slide, um, you'll see that the, the city uses uh, di digital media as a means for efficient flow of information, both to and from the public, which would be critical in providing garden response and services in any given scenario. So on March 15, as we move forward, all classes from all levels of uh, public and private schools were suspended. And then I imposed a curfew from 10 in the evening up until five in the morning. And uh, at the border controls, ambulances carrying patients with respiratory distress were not allowed to enter the city borders, except for those uh, with uh, patients with heart attack, gunshot wounds, stab wounds, or uh, people that needed uh, surgery or giving birth were the ones uh, that were allowed to uh, enter, including those uh, that needed dialysis. Uh, we imposed a citywide uh, community quarantine and on March uh, 16, as you can see in the timeline, uh, I also suspended the uh, entry of uh, uh, passenger uh, ships not coming from uh, different parts, especially coming from Cebu. I uh, also convened all hospital administrators and representatives. I called on the Department of Health regional head and the Department of Interior and local government to discuss management and precautionary measures regarding COVID-19. And I also organized all uh, barangay chairmen to establish protocols for COVID-19 response in their own in their own barangays. So on March 17, <clears throat> in the next slide, uh, a task force uh, reported our first count of uh, uh, PUI. We have 11 cases, and uh, we were monitoring about 739 uh, people under monitoring uh, category. My council passed a resolution urging business in Ormoc to prevent overpricing and uh, hoarding, hoarding of supplies. And uh, on March uh, 22, our uh, Environment and Natural Resources uh, Office, together with the General Services Division and the uh, League of uh, Barangays, initiated major housekeeping activities to prepare Ormoc City Hospital to be an isolation facility in preparation for a worst case scenario of having an increase uh, in number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the city. So this uh, small hospital that we have, but which is really used for, uh, for drug rehab center, for diagnostic, we convert this into a just specific COVID-19 hospital. And uh, we call it a unified hospital because three hospitals are working on this uh, uh, unified hospital just to, just to accept all uh, COVID patients. No? And on March 23, we canceled all, all fiesta activities uh, fiestas, as you know, is a big event in the provinces, and it was painful for for us to to uh, cancel our fiesta activities, which uh, falls on the third week of June. But uh, moving on, uh, on April first, we declared um, that Ormoc City Hospital is ready as an isolation facility in the event that COVID nineteen cases are confirmed in the city, and I ordered all one hundred ten barangays to set up their own isolation center. Later on, I'll, I will show you in, in my uh, uh, spatial uh, page uh, on uh, the number of isolations that we have, uh, the density of people in the city, uh, but I'll, I'll show that uh, later on. And then on April 3rd, <clears throat> as you know, when uh, businesses were closed, a lot of people lost their jobs as well. And the uh, Philippines is not a, a very rich country, especially in the provinces. There are a lot of uh, poor people uh, living in in, uh, in outskirts of Metro Manila. And uh, on the next slide, I will show you that uh, we uh, purchased uh, more than 60,000 uh, sacks of rice. And uh, what I did was 
I ask all the barangay captains to uh, count all the houses they have in every barangay and I order them to give one sack of rice per house. Uh, and that was good for at least uh, six weeks no, for, for their uh, food sustenance. Kung sabi ko saan lang, we'll take care of the rice, you take care of the bayan. Kaya nang bahala sa ulam ninyo. No? Uh, and I'll show you in the next slide, uh, as, as you can see here, this, um, this how a uh, barangay isolation center would look like. Now, that's a, that's a typical uh, barangay isolation. And uh, I came up with an executive order uh, to establish the operation of uh, barangay isolation units. And uh, on the next slide, I uh, convened the local price coordinating council to uh, closely monitor uh, price movements in the local market to impose also a price freeze to basic commodities to prevent overpricing you know, by unscrupulous uh, business entities. So the council is uh, composed of multi uh, agencies spearheaded by the Department of uh, Technology and uh, the Department of Trade, sorry. And then uh, we also uh, imposed a strict regulation in our public market. Initially, I, uh, I told our policemen not to allow uh, vehicles to park uh, close to the market because uh, we're imposing uh, physical distancing or social distancing so that we'll have more space for, for people walking inside the, the market. So we regulated uh, uh, our parking and I asked uh, our men in uniform also that uh, not to allow people uh, entry if they're not wearing masks. So a no mask, no entry was imposed, uh, not just in the complex, but also in the whole city. In fact, uh, we have uh, a city ordinance here penalizing people who are not wearing masks. No? Uh, if they, they'll be caught, uh, they'll be fined initially 1,000, then the next and final uh, warning, they'll uh, be sanctioned with 5,000 and uh, six days imprisonment. And on the next slide, I'm showing you sectoral organizations were prepared and mobilized, having a valuable part in the city's holistic response against uh, COVID-19 uh, disease. When I first uh, became mayor in 2016, I told them that I'd like to have a, uh, a participative governance and uh, I involve uh, people from, uh, from different uh, organizations, uh, the academe, the, the scientists uh, in our city, the doctors, all of them should be part of, uh, of our growth. No? And uh, as you can see here in, 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 um, in this slide, uh, the health sectors included, the uh, micro, small, and uh, uh, medium sectors for, for uh, the economic sectors are, in, are involved, the barangays, our men in uniform, our uh, people from the labor uh, sector, from the industrial sector. They're all part of uh, what we're doing here in Ormoc City. And uh, the city government uh, negotiated with businesses involved in production, trading, and distribution of uh, essential commodities to seek a win-win solution that will also benefit the consuming public, which is really very important nowadays. No? And uh, we also ask, up until now, we ask uh, people, corporations to continuously uh, help us and uh, donate if ever they can, uh, PPEs, masks, or uh, oxygen, anything that they, they can help with in our daily, daily operations. Uh, it's not easy to, to uh, run a uh, COVID operation in, in the city and we spend about at least about 600 to 700,000 pesos a day just for our full operation. Uh, knowing that uh, Ormoc City is an agricultural city, so we asked uh, them to, uh, if they can uh, lend their tractors because every night uh, we deployed our, um, our local farmers' uh, assets to help disinfect city streets, as you can see in the next slide. No? Uh, this move really gained a lot of uh, praises from our uh, from our neighbors and uh, from our uh, people right here in or or Mox City. Uh, it's really nice to to see all these tractors moving at night and uh, disinfecting the streets, the side roads, and uh, some uh, buildings in uh, in uh, or Mox City. Uh, on the next slide, uh, I um, issued an executive order establishing the Ormoc Ligtas COVID Center. Uh, we are fortunate that uh, we have a uh, national housing authority housing that has not yet uh, been uh, uh, transferred or given to beneficiaries. So this, what we use now, 
uh, as our quarantine and isolation uh, area. In this uh, NHA housing, we have 700 homes that can house uh, people coming in from the borders. Anybody that will enter or mock city coming from other places, especially from a COVID affected area, uh, must have a 14 day mandatory quarantine stay in this area. And uh, once they get in, in our uh, Ligtas COVID center, we feed them three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, parang libre ng hotel nila, and then na quarantine pa sila. Uh, again, that, that, that's the reason why uh, I said uh, our operations not is not uh, easy because it entails a lot of uh, resources and a lot of people. Uh, we have uh, four major borders, and all these borders are manned 24/7 by uh, by policemen and uh, people from uh, uh, working in our uh, LGU. On the next slide. This uh, the, the the flow chart of um, on how we uh, uh, bring in our people. So the next slide will show you the border control from travel uh, from uh, different areas. So as you can see, the first one border from travel, except those uh, with positive areas for people under monitoring or people under investigation. Uh, they will be classified where they'll be sent to, whether they'll be at the Barangay Isolation Center or at the Dadog Isolation Center. Uh, all those coming from, from the region will all be sent to our bi Barangay Isolation Centers. But those coming out of the region, like coming from Cebu, coming from Manila, will go straight to our NHA housing and they will be uh, given a 14-day uh, mandatory stay. In the next slide, I will show you the, how our uh, uh, LIGTA centers uh, look like. This one uh, evacuation center that we have in uh, Ormoc City, uh, 25 bed capacity. So those that are coming from the region will uh, come in uh, and, and uh, stay in this area. Or those who would not uh, want to stay in this area, I'll show you in the next slide that uh, we have a uh, memorandum of uh, agreement with uh, different hotels in uh, Ormoc City and uh, they can stay here. No? They have the, they have the, the pleasure of uh, staying in an air-conditioned room, watching Netflix, you know, watching their favorite movies and stuff. Uh, but, you know, at their own expense. And uh, on the next slide, I'm showing you this, uh, this, uh, this are, uh, COVID hospital that is being run, by, uh, that being run by, by three major hospitals in Ormoc City, namely the Ormoc Doctors Hospital, the Ormoc Farmers Medical Center, and uh, Gatchelian Hospital. So in this building, we have a uh, capacity of uh, 30 beds, specific, specifically for those uh, uh, symptomatic uh, COVID patients. And uh, on the next slide, uh, we created a contact tracing team in uh, Ormoc City. Uh, we have uh, 56 uh, health officers, 47 uh, police officers, and uh, 344 members coming from uh, the Bar Barangay Health Emergency Response uh, Team. And uh, I also uh, 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 came out with an executive order prescribing guidelines and the management of uh, human remains. No? Um, on the next slide, I'll, I'll, I, am, I have here the executive order that if, a, if somebody will die of COVID, they have to be buried within uh, 12 hours. And if not, uh, if they'll die of, uh, other, uh, of other causes, they have to be buried within 24 hours. But uh, you know, as time progresses, as we move on, this has changed already, except for those uh, that will uh, pass away uh, because of uh, COVID, then after 12 hours, they have to be buried. Otherwise, it's the usual uh, seven days uh, burial in, in, in the Philippines. And the next slide, uh, I also uh, came out with, uh, with an ordinance no? approved by my council, a no mask, uh, no entry. And uh, like what I said earlier, if you'll be caught uh, in the city without a mask, you will be fined 1,000 pesos. Uh, in the next uh, slide, um, that that is the the penalty, you know, one thousand to five thousand pesos. And then again, on the next slide, uh, this how we uh, manage our market. Uh, we uh, install the hand washing facilities, and uh, everybody should have a QR code. You know? So uh, in in our contact tracing, we moved on from <clears throat> manually signing in or logging in to uh, <clears throat> to QR code. And I'll, I'll discuss that in a while after five minutes. And you know, 
the transportation system that we have here in Ormoc is that we have jeepneys, buses, and uh, tricycles. So if, if you can, if you take a look at the next one, uh, this is how we, uh, we manage our uh, tricycles for social distancing. We have to put an acetate uh, sheet in front of them so that uh, saliva inhalation, you know, uh, cannot be, hopefully, cannot be transferred from one person to another. And uh, again, wearing a face shield by all drivers uh, is mandatory. And uh, most of the most of the face masks that they use are all donated. No, so again, we came out with um, a lot of um, uh, information materials. And uh, the thing here in Ormoc is that kusini papasok dito na hindi magpapaalam. If we find out, uh, if we catch them entering the borders without uh, the proper documents, our our police and our uh, contact tracing team will really look for them. And once we find them, we will bring them to our isolation areas. And uh, that is where they have to stay for 14 days. So in, in, the, sl in the slide that you will see here, uh, if anyone will be uh, affected by COVID, whether symptomatic or, or uh, symptomatic, uh, we will have to initially lock down the barangay and where they stay. Uh, until uh, we're done with our contact uh, uh, tracing report, no. Um, we all the next uh, slide, please. Uh, okay, in the next slide, uh, that is uh, you can see the the barangay lockdown. So we we put in uh, policemen, we put in barangay tanods, and we put in uh, some. Uh, uh, barangay health officers right at the at the uh, lockdown barangay and then we move on to the next one uh, the, the government came up with a uh, social amelioration program uh, helping people uh, displaced people without jobs uh, some funds no and uh, in uh, Ormoc City we were given uh, 8,000 for 60,000 people and uh, we we were able to match them well as you can see here this is our super dome uh, this is a social distancing that uh, uh we're doing for every time that we have uh, a program or a program for uh, social amelioration uh and then if we can move on to the next slide i uh, <clears throat> came out with a quarantine pass for everybody uh Mandating people, only one person from each family can go out of their homes. No? Uh, they can only uh, leave their home, homes if they need to go to the market, buy medicines, um, or uh, get essential things that are uh, needed in their homes. No? Uh, as you can see, uh, one uh, quarantine pass is only good for one person coming from the family. And uh, because because it's difficult for, for people to be moving from one place to another. And, uh, you know, our mock is such a, such a big area. We're almost as big as Metro Manila. And we only have uh, one central market. So on the next slide, I'm showing you that uh, we uh, came out with the market on wheels. So we have uh, vendors coming in groups, going to the different barangays on uh, different days. Uh, selling everything that you'll, you'll find in, uh, in the main market, but on a smaller scale. So we call that, uh, we call that market and wheels. And you know, up to this day, we're still doing it and it's very successful and uh, very uh, convenient for those people living in, uh, in uh, the different barangays. Uh, we also have, uh, I also came out with uh, the Gulayanza barangay, the, on the following slides, you can see that people to plant vegetables since they're not working they're not doing uh, uh, a lot of things at home so those who have uh, opened lots of their places uh, I gave them seeds and now they're uh, planting vegetables so if you can see the next um, the next slide the next two slides uh, people are happy because the vegetables are growing uh, and we call this uh, utanun sa ormo. So we're, we, uh, is we Mayor Gomez, Mayor Gomez, pardon me. If you could kindly speak closer to the microphone, pardon me, oh, if you okay, could. Okay. So as you can see in the next slide, uh, it came up with this uh, program, Utanon Sa, 
sour mox and this being implemented in uh, over 80 barangays in uh, in Ormoc city and uh, on a on a regular basis uh, i i call i call uh, people to uh, to meet with us and uh, and the next slide please uh, I had a port management coordinating meeting for Leyte Biliran Islands in anticipation of the opening of ports uh, in, in the region, uh, region 8 and region uh, 7, which uh, covers Cebu. Uh, a lot of uh, local government units were involved. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the Leyte province, Hilongos, and uh, Southern Leyte. Uh, and the next slide again. Uh, So I came out again with a, with a recovery task force that was created on April 20 uh, for the Balik Provincia program and the Hatid Provincia initiatives. And you can see uh, when they started coming in, they were all tested. Uh, they had to uh, sign in and uh, they were all assisted properly by, uh, by men in uniform. Uh, and then uh, we began opening our borders in Ormoc City. Uh, in the next slide, you will see <clears throat> that uh, each and every town near nearby Ormoc City were given a border pass. Uh, why? If you take a look at the border pass, you'll see that there's Merida, Matagal, the names of uh, the different uh, municipality. Uh, we did that purposely so that in case there'll be a uh, local transmission in their area, let's say, for example, in Kananga, it'll be easy for us to uh, to just close the, to uh, not to accept uh, people with uh, uh, border pass carrying uh, their uh, specific uh, municipality and then I issued also several uh, executive orders defining guidelines uh, on COVID-19 response in Ormoc. No? Uh, we also have a uh, donation drive on the next two slides you'll see that uh, a lot of uh, people have, uh, have been donating to, to Ormoc City not just funds but uh, uh, they've been donating to us uh, supplies and materials. The next slide, please. Uh, food and uh, non-food items for our COVID-19 response. Uh, what I want to show you, the next slide, is our uh, web-based uh, geospatial uh, risk database for COVID-19 pandemic response and recovery project. Uh, as you can see in the next slide, uh, Ormoc City's uh, close contact uh, PUMs and suspects for PUIs from uh, March 16 up until uh, July 27. Initially, when, uh, when the Hatid Provincia came in and uh, when, when people started coming home, we received almost 2,000 people, repatriates, coming in from uh, different areas. That's why uh, from, uh, from uh, June 3, uh, from uh, March uh, 16 up until, uh, uh, until April, you can see this really big rise, no? But uh, as we entered in uh, May, uh, in April, May, up until uh, June, uh, it has tapered. And then, pag uh, balik ulit ng balik probinsya and uh, hatid probinsya tulong, uh, again, there's a, a rise in, uh, in uh, entries of uh, PUMs and PUIs. In the next slide, I will show you the epidemic curve of uh, confirmed uh, COVID cases, uh, the, the green, the green uh, colors that you will see are for uh, locally stranded individuals coming in uh, or Mok City and uh, the light blue, you see the OFWs coming in and the uh, pink color are for local transmission that we had here in Ormok City. But uh, luckily the local transmission we had only happened inside our uh, quarantine and isolation area because uh, some nurses were, uh, uh, were con uh, had a close contact with uh, those uh, with uh, COVID and you know, they were affected. And then the next slide, let me show you our, uh, our uh, online. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is for uh, the case dumping time for uh, our uh, online uh, dashboard layers. If you'll see, these are more city that we have 110 barangays. And uh, the different colors will show you the density of uh, people living in each barangay. So the darkest one is where the center of uh, Ormoc is. Now that, that, that's the main city. And the next slide is uh, the population density per, per barangay. Uh, and uh, the, the third slide, I'm showing you the localized lockdown mapping. We use this in case we have to close down our uh, barangays in, in any of the 110 
uh, barangays all over or Mock City. And uh, the next slide, uh, like I mentioned a while ago, uh, these are our security border points. Uh, the red the red colors are the the border controls of Ormoc City. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the main areas from uh, from the north, the mountainside, Valencia, and the uh, and the San Juan area. And the two uh, small ones are the port area of uh, Ormoc City. This uh, area uh, is where people coming from Bohol and Cebu enter. So next slide, I'm showing you our uh, geospatial uh, dashboard for uh, suspect cases recorded. Although all of these people came from the NGA housing or from our COVID hospitals, but in these uh, colors, you will see that this, this is where they live in Ormoc City. Just in case we have to backtrack, we know exactly where they live and which area of Ormoc City they are from. And uh, the next one will show you the probable cases recorded. And we have 10 of them as of uh, July 27, yeah, July 27, just uh, the other day. Uh, and the next one, the next uh, slides, please. Uh, you will see the confirmed cases recorded. No, We've had 64 COVID cases in Ormoc City. Uh, they're now all well. They're now uh, all uh, in their uh, homes. Uh, although we've had two deaths in Ormoc City, but they're not from Ormoc. They're from uh, either Kananga or a next, next town, Albuera. So all of these uh, people, if we need to see them or if they need, the doctors need to uh, check on them, we know exactly where they are. And the uh, isolation facilities, as you can see in this slide, we have uh, uh, four major ones and uh, three uh, smaller, three, three small hotels. And the next slide you'll see of the, uh, the next slide you'll see our barangay isolation units. So all of these uh, red dots are all for barangays. The ones that stay here are coming from the regions, no? So that, 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 that's how more or less we, uh, <clears throat> that is more or less how we uh, control uh, people coming in from different areas. And um, the last slide for that, I'm showing you the re relief efforts uh, on how we distributed our uh, uh, sacks of rice to the different uh, homes in Ormoc City. Initially, we gave uh, 65,000 sacks of rice for our first batch. And then just about two weeks ago, uh, we uh, gave them another, another sack of rice to uh, 65,000 uh, households in uh, Ormoc City. And uh, we also came out with our uh, QR code for, for contact tracing. And then we also uh, uh, established our uh, own uh, molecular and diagnostic center for RT and PCR testing. Um, just for just to uh, keep our mock safe. In the following slides, please, uh, together with the uh, Energy Development Corporation, uh, together with the uh, uh, hospital and support with uh, the IATF, no, the Interagency Task Force of uh, the National Government. Uh, the next slide you will see that uh, we already uh, signed a uh, memorandum of uh, agreement, and our testing center will uh, open. Uh, on uh, August uh, August 15, uh, we're just waiting for the machines to come in and uh, to be calibrated. So in that picture, you'll see uh, <clears throat> people working together for one good cause to fight uh, COVID-19. In the next slides, please. Oh, this is the president of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, EDC. Uh, you'll see here in the next slide, uh, we came up with our own uh, QR code for uh, contact tracing. You, know? you see, we call it a safe or mock uh, QR code, uh, and uh, it, it's easy for them to just uh, uh, get the QR code system to identify themselves. And we use this as they enter the borders, as they enter uh, uh, the stores, as they enter the groceries, everything, as they enter any establishments in Ormoc City for easy contact tracing. So you'll see in the next slide, <clears throat> Uh, there are uh, about 172,000, almost 173,000 already have uh, registered in our QR code system. And all over MOC, we have 6,800 scanners. No, Just, just yesterday, we scanned about 34,000 people and, uh, who, who's been using and, and in, uh, coming in, in and out restaurants, building facilities. So, We've had a total scan 
of about almost a million already since we we started. So in the following slides, you will see that uh, uh, these are our total uh, daily scans. No, on, we do this on a daily basis. And in the next uh, slide, you'll see uh, most of the most establishments that uh, people go to. So as you can see that Robinson's uh, Robinson's uh, department store is still uh, number one here. A lot of people go to the mall. Uh, you can see a lot of people uh, go to uh, the grocery. They go to uh, you know retail shops. So if you take a look at it, if you break it down, that is how it's going to to uh, look like. So that is our uh, QR code system. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Joel. Thank you so much for, for this opportunity, for showing the people uh, how we do things and how we work yes. it out in uh, Ormok City. You know, we're not a very rich city, but we make do with uh, how good our people here in Ormok are. So thank you so much and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Gomez. You gave a very comprehensive uh, presentation. I think your presentation just underscored the fact that uh, being a mayor of a city anywhere in the world, even in the Philippines, or particularly in the Philippines, uh, really uh, is to be a chief executive officer. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that in certain aspects is even more challenging than being a CEO of a, of a private company. Uh, if not, you're just joining it's us, not uh, easy, it's not easy to it's not easy to be a mayor. You know, uh, the the mayor really is like a uh, psychiatrist. No, we try to solve things on a daily basis. And the thing is, when you solve one problem, another problem will come in because of how you solved it. So that, that's how it is here. Things are revolved that way. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So if you're just joining us, because some people just join us, uh, you're joining the, the special plenary lecture of Paase, and uh, Mayor Gomez just uh, finished his presentation. If you have any questions, please post them, and I'll make sure that I get the written responses to your questions. But as well as I get to ask Mayor Gomez a couple of questions. So I really appreciated your uh, philosophy of a participative governance meaning to say talking with the various stakeholders of your city uh, to make sure that you arrive at the best solution oh, John, and implement I can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Hold on. I, I think right. I lost you. Sorry, I, 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 uh, I can't okay. hear you. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Can, yes, I can hear you well, yes. Anyway, I was just saying that I really appreciated your principle of a participative governance. Okay, I hope we, we didn't lose him. <laughs> All right, uh, in the meantime, okay, there he is. Mary Gomez, can you hear me? All right, so what we can do is having some technical problems is I'm sure he's gonna come back on. Uh, we could uh, proceed with our lectures and then I can ask him a few questions after my presentation. So Mayor Gomez, if you can hear me, we're just gonna proceed with the uh, proceedings and we'll get back to you when you get back on.